doing lap after lap. The car was performing well, and then uh, my car catches it on fire. You know, I've been in a couple of fires, and some are bigger than others, so this little one at Irwindale was nothing compared to the clip in China. I'm sure I don't need to tell you guys, but fires are bad, okay? What up? I'm Matt Field. I'm Odie Bookshees. And this is my car. And this is my car. Don't get me wrong, I want to beat everybody out there, but there's one guy in particular. He's a great teammate, but an even better frenemy. So in Formula Drift, we have eight rounds, and we are here at Irwindale, the final round of the season. High speed, bank, walls everywhere, and it's a sellout crowd. Irwindale is a special place for a lot of people. The drivers, the fans, they don't call it the house of drift for nothing. Being at the end of the season, a lot is on the line here, and the track is so fun, a little bit scary, incredibly fast, and the action is just out of this world. Irwindale 2018 is the final event of the season. We're gonna hang out, say what's up to some drivers, kick some tires, give some advice, probably. Get sunburned. I've been driving this since 2011 in a Nissan S14 chassis. Year after year, I come back here, and every year we are changing how I'm gonna run the track because my car is evolving so much. It's a great place to benchmark where I am. Irwindale is the place where I got my first ever top 16. Irwindale is also the place where I got my second win. This year we're sixth in points. Honestly, not too bad, all things considered. I think it is possible to get up to about four. Uh, that's really our goal for the weekend. Just up until this round, we've like put all the grip we possibly can in the car and still been searching for more. Here this weekend, we came out with too much grip and had to back it down. So that feels good knowing that there is more in the car. Welcome to Irwindale, arguably Formula Drift's most iconic track. Formula Drift started here at this track. We've come back here as the final round for multiple years. It is the ultimate track to watch. Drivers who are in Pro-Am or ending Pro 2, they want to know, this is what I have to do next year, or this is what I aspire to do. You see the risk and the reward here. What are we doing right now? Uh, just uh, tightening up some axle bolts. Uh, normally we have to retighten them when he goes out because things change. So after this, we're just doing it twice as much because we don't know what's going to happen. Just to make sure everything's healthy for the most part. It's kind of nice down here, huh? Yeah. I line up for my first qualifying run and I have to make every lap count. I'm not going to throw it away by feeling out my car. All I could do is just chuck it in and drift the entire course. Damn down to straight away as I normally do. Honestly, it feels like one of the better runs from the weekend. Everything's going really smooth and I actually go really deep into outer zone two. The back of my car hits the wall a little bit. It's a little more than a scrape. I can feel it kind of digs into it. You know those rear bumpers are expensive. I discovered I got a 90 for it. Typical Odie Bonchis, which is a very aggressive driver, one of the best chase drivers out there. I'm feeling pretty solid. All right, here we go. Matt Field, his Falcon Tires Corvette. Gosh, I love this thing. Probably one of my favorite cars on the grid. And it has taken a lick and keeps on ticking. On my first qualifying run, I threw it up on the bank. All was seeming well. And then right as I come off the bank, the car shuts down. I'm like forced with the decision, you know, do, do I try to salvage it? Do I just call it? And I just said, screw it. Bump started it, got it back going, pulled the handbrake again, and finished the run, and we got an 89. 
and I'm really fortunate that we were able to do that because on the second run, the car shut down altogether on the bank and there was no saving it. There was literally nothing I could do. Good start. Yeah, it's not bad. You get in there. Well, good luck on the second one. Nice run, dude. Thank you. I was a little bummed out about qualifying in 17th place with an 89, but then I realized there's a chance that we might have not even qualified. Yeah. Pretty happy about it, I guess. Hey, is the throttle body plugged in? Yeah, right here, yeah. It's still burning. Kind of. Is it the ECU? Don't know. No? Just throwing in thousands of dollars just to see. Sick. <laughs> I'm gonna just go back to the washers because the hole's too big. We weren't sure what the issue was. We kind of just replaced everything, the throttle body, the throttle pedal. This is kind of the price that I pay because of how complicated my car is. There's a, there's a lot of different systems that need to work together electronically, mechanically, how much power we're making, reliability. You know, I did that for a reason. I think it's going to give me an edge. Odie's here, and then here, and then... Oh, murder. We got a pretty tough bracket for tomorrow. We start top 32 with four swing. I'm not quite sure where my head's at because I have to remember to focus and drive well, but I'm not sure what my car is gonna do. We're heading down to the grid, check in with the boys. It's really cool coming to these events to see all you guys. It's super fun to like meet people who watch our channel and watch our shows. How's the car? It runs. <laughs> it has pistons that move. It's one of those things where we've been battling it all year and it's like much worse. It smells oily. And we're gonna send it and see how it is. Who's he going up against first? Uh, Forrest Wing. Oh, sweet. If we yeah. get past that one, it's James Dean. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the dude who got a 99 qualified. Huh? Forrest is one of those drivers who is always on point. This year, especially, he's decently quick. Forrest and I went against each other the first time with New Jersey when I smashed into him. Oh, it feels goes into the side of Forrest Wang. But I won. And then again in St. Louis. Woo! And we got the win as well. This will be the third time. Who knows? And our cars were really, really close. I don't have to worry about my car being faster or his car being fast. It was set up to be a really, really good battle. Practice went really well. I was doing lap after lap. The car was performing well. And then uh, my car catches it on fire. You know, I've been in a couple of fires and some are bigger than others. So this little one at Irwindale was nothing compared to the clip in China. I'm sure I don't need to tell you guys, but fires are bad, okay? The engine burnt up because there was so much cylinder pressure pushing the oil out. With a, a problem like that, we're faced with the decision, right? The car is puking oil everywhere. It's more than likely gonna catch on fire again. The team's asking me, what do you wanna do? What do you wanna do? And I just yell at them, clean this shit off and let's go. We came back, disabled the cylinder that was the issue, sprayed the whole thing down with contact cleaner and pretended that it was fixed. Forrest is known for that really smooth style and Matt Field always known as being very aggressive, sometimes maybe going a little bit too big, but that's what we really like about Matt is that he's willing to push the level. I shut my visor, waited for the light and left the line. Wow, look at that. To be completely honest with you, my car was pretty much on fire as I left the line. Smoke's coming in my face, I lost the power steering. I make it to the end of the bank and at the end of the bank, the car starts going like this towards the wall. At that point, I knew it was all I could possibly do to pull it off the wall and shut down. I think that's gonna be all she wrote, unfortunately, for Matt Field, Ryan. We pull back in, and at that point, I know I'm done. A shit day, but overall not too bad for the season. The car was getting faster. We were consistently in the top five fastest cars out there. We got two podiums. We made top 16 almost every round. The Corvette has progressed 
immensely throughout the season. And to do that in the first year in a new chassis, with a small team, with a small shop, with almost everything built in house, you know, that's a testament and that goes to show you what the sport of drifting is. Unfortunately, it goes out in the top 32, but there is no reason to hang your head, Matt Field. It was a great season there and an awesome campaign for 2018. Matt is out for the weekend and the season. Odie's about to go top 32 up against Rad Dan. Dan Burkett is a local drifter. He's more of a rookie. He's definitely climbing the ranks, but he's still, you know, fresh. First time I competed against Dan this season was at Long Beach. He sent it pretty hard. Oh, goodness gracious! Front, back, side to side. Honestly, Dan's been really refining himself as a driver. He was healing it during practice out at this round. He was riding the wall, going into the inner bank on a really good high line. That's what's crazy about this sport. Drivers are constantly evolving. I think he's got a really good shot of getting into the top 16. Hopefully, because if he doesn't, then both our guys are done. We're just like hanging out, the time, which might be fun. We threw our qualifying setup in there, tweaked it just a tiny, tiny bit. You can never be at ease. You know, this is drifting. One little slip up, and you can sacrifice your run. Everyone out here can put together runs that are just hard to beat at times. So you got to be on it no matter what. Looks like we've got Odie Bonchis taking on Rad Dan Burkett. Out front, good angle from him, high on that bank. Now into that outer zone goes Odie Bonchis. He really fills that outside zone extremely well. An incredible lead run. That's always a good advantage when you go into your chase. Yo, Odie, your initiation was a little weak, but by the end of the bank, you really pulled it out. All in all, a really good run, buddy. Thanks for keeping the car in one piece. Rad Dan Burkett out front in that Toyota Supra. Now he's finding his sweet spot, but Odie Bakshis has as well. And he's right there on the side of Dan Burkett. Dan Burkett exits that outside zone a little bit early, punts that, oh, and gets into that wall. Oh, man, looks like 15 sixteenths of a Supra now as he pushes it in. Rad Dan probably had the run of his career, but Odie was right on his tail the whole time. Really, really pulled something out. So we're going to the top 16. Always top 32 is nerve-wracking. As prepared as you feel like you are, it's always a relief getting over that hurdle and you know just making it past that into top 16. So yeah, that was good. Good practice for top 16. Thanks. Where did my bumper come off? As soon as I got the bracket, my eyes always wander. Okay, who's top 16? And I saw right away. If I beat Dan Burkett, the only way for me to go further is by beating Peter Vicek. It's another day, you know? The final round, anything could happen. The track's all slippery. There's a lot of potential. A lot of underdogs can come through and knock those top guys off. So, or, you know, maybe just the dominant guys will come through and just stomp them down. Behind the wheel of the Falcon tires, S14.5, Oni Bakshis! That's our guy. Odie had a sweet first round. His runs were super clean. A lot of room for him to come in here and be a big upset and scramble up the standing. His curly hair speaks volumes, but his car does as well. It is Peter Vissen! You know, with Peter, it's definitely going to be a tough one. I don't want to keep losing to the same guy. He's got a weakness. There's got to be something. You got this Polish driver. He's on his sophomore season. We looked at some of his stats, in particular in Orlando, because Peter went out early It's Chris Forsberg. We've got a big gap at the end. Visek's just nowhere to be found. And honestly, Peter just didn't get off the line early enough. Simple mistake, but other than that, he was on it. The times that he's lost were simple slip-ups. Honestly, with Peter, he's on fuel suspension coilovers and Falcon tires. Same equipment as I run on my cars. It's tough to get an upper edge on someone who's using a similar car. 
turn this around, I knew my car had more speed in it. During practice, we actually had to tone my car back to make it more drivable. It was so tight and fast that kind of handful to drive. But when you go up against someone like Peter, you throw that setting into the car that might be difficult to drive, but you know it's gonna yield a very fast and aggressive car. The tire warm up, that's when you just really get in the zone. Your chance as a driver to become one with your car, the grip level, the throttle response, once you really hone that in and your tires are up to temp, you know you're ready to go. Peter Visek and Odi Bakshis and Peter Visek will lead. Peter Visek throws it in. I know that I'm gonna have to chuck my car into his door from the first corner. And Odi Bakshis right there. Look at Odi Bakshis riding the wall. Odi Bakshis comes down. Kind of riding that very fine line, modulating throttle, left foot braking a little bit. And Odi Bakshis strikes again. Look at these S chassis doing battle. That was insane. Odie just killed his follow run. Phenomenal job. Almost rubbing tires there. Both yeah. these guys on some Falcon tire rubbers. Wow. Just like that. The whole time. Just my hands. That's where they were the whole time. Initiation, commitment, and proximity is going to give us the win as long as Odie can put down a really solid uh, lead right here. I feel confident, but Peter is a really good driver. I've seen Peter put together amazing chase runs also, so anything could happen at this point. Initiated both of them simultaneously. This is what I was talking about. Look at that. Peter Visek. Right there, he went hard in the outside zone one. A little bit of gap there, but now Peter right Visek closing the, the gap. Yep. Odie Bakshi's just his posture and his poise it looks really tremendous. I put my car where it needs to be. I still hear Peter's car, which means he's very close to me. That's it. So, so run to run. I think that's a one more time for me. That's a one more time. Honestly, after that run, we line up and we're just waiting for the judge's verdict and I don't know which way it's going to go. Are we going to slide him left? We're going to slide him right. And he says Odie Bakshi. Odie gets the win or it's a one more time. Ryan says one more time. Come on, come on. And then finally, Brian says... Odie Bakshi. Odie Bakshi. S14 is still in the Ah, finally! Peter's beat me several times this season, and I didn't want that to end off the season that way. It was really good. Congrats, man. Oh, oh it was awesome. <laughs> I saw you all, I saw you all the time. <laughs> that was I heard really you all I was on the way. Some of the best driving I've ever seen from Odie. That was one of the best chase runs I've ever seen, period. You go up against these guys, you gotta bring it. He brought it. He's moving on today. Moving on down the line, a former champ, the Monster Energy Nitto Tire Ford Performance Mustang RTR Spec 5D. He's ready to rock, Vaughn Ginn Jr. For top eight, I got a battle against Vaughn Ginn Jr. I know this is not gonna be easy. Vaughn Jr. is a former champion. He knows what he's doing. He has tons of experience on this track. He's looking good this weekend. He's always fast. He's always powerful. Pretty high on the bank. We can expect a good run out of him. His car is very obscure. It handles in a very strange way. It takes a concentration following Vaughn. So the Mustangs just behave a little differently on the track. Odie's a good, clean driver. So uh, it's going to be a good battle, but uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. You think you got an edge on him? I always think I got an edge on everybody, or else I wouldn't be here. It's Odie Bakshis versus Vaughn Gittin Jr. We love Vaughn, but we're pulling, we're pulling for Odie because we got our name on the car. And if we win, we get tens of millions of dollars. I know this is not going to be easy, but I beat Vaughn before. I feel confident. My car's more nimble. I really have a shot at this, and I'm feeling confident going into the battle. We are back here with our next battle up, starting off with Odie Bakshis and Vaughn Gitt Jr. Odie looks like he is absolutely on point. 
But he's got to get through Vaughn Ginn Jr. Vaughn qualified higher than me, so oh. he chases first. Vaughn Ginn Jr. out front. Odie Bakshi in that chase position. Vaughn says, I'm going to beat Odie. Then I suck right up to his door. This is what he did at Peter Bissing on that chase. We come down the bank, it gets kind of hairy. His car is in front of me, and uh, I feel like it pauses a little bit. What happens after that is crazy. And Vonkin Jr. in that, oh, and Odie Box, she spins. I completely lose traction, feel like I'm skipping over something. I am just in a plume of smoke as my car comes to a stop. Fortunately, he kept it off the wall, but Vonkin Jr. continues through the paces. That looked like he just hit a banana peel. I back out of the smoke. I was literally right up against the K-Rail. I came to a stop right in time before smashing my car. Now watch, I think right here they're gonna hit, yeah. They're gonna make contact, and I think the bumper's gonna go so right under me Look here. at Vaughn's is hanging. Yeah, and I think it's gonna maybe get under the wheel right there. Yeah, it looked like in the first transition, it went under the car. Initially they thought it was under the front wheels, but then it didn't look like that. It looked like it went under the real wheel. Got to go again. So if that was the first run. He's leading this time, so hopefully he can pull something cool. Odie just got a little bit too close, causing him to touch the back bumper of Ungit. So that would basically be a, a mistake on Odie Bakshi. He knows who he's going against. So much history with this track for different drivers. You know, Odie Bakshi, he's been here almost 10 years, and then Von Gitt Jr. since day one. So for the judges, so we'll see what happens. chase down as aggressive as he was earlier. So here we go, Odie Bakshi's on that bank. Pass that inner clip. And Von Gitt Jr. giving himself maybe a little bit of distance. Obviously not from the wall, sparks go flying. Odie Bakshi's a solid lead run. But I don't think any mistake large enough to offset that spin of Odie Bakshi's. It's a real bummer, because that was a really good lead run. Really, really good good run. run. And Brian says Vaughn Gitt Jr. It's unanimous. Shit happens. I felt like we had a really good run. I'm deemed at fault because I was too close and they were saying that I ripped the bumper off, which caused the bumper to go under the car. It happens, man. There's so many variables. The judges have a very hard job. It's a fast-paced sport. And sometimes it just gets, it just goes like that. Up a bit. Jack up the front. This season's been humbling. Overall though, I learned some lessons and honestly in the off season, I got some things to practice on. I need to just start driving more again. Even if it's just demos or just going out and jamming with buddies, you know, at the track, it, it puts things in perspective and it kind of shows you like, hey, I'm doing this because I love it. I've actually been thinking about this question. Do I love the sport more than ever? I lost a little bit of my life throughout the season. And that makes me think, like, what could I have been doing? Spending time with family, making money instead of spending money, living a normal life. And I think about that and I'm like, nah, that sounds shit.